Hey there, I know you're probably really excited about setting up your development environment and start coding with Spark, but just give me this one short video. We just have to go over a high-level overview of what makes the Spark ecosystem, and then we're going to get practical starting in the next lesson, okay? At a high level, the Spark platform consists of five components. There's Spark Core, Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, GraphX, and MLib. Uh, Spark Core is the meat of the Spark framework, okay? And we'll dive pretty deep into how this framework ties everything together. But in short, Spark Core contains all of the functionality for running distributed applications and takes care of the coordination between nodes in the cluster. It also provides the foundational data abstraction known as the RDD, which uh, takes care of the complexities involved with working with distributed systems. We'll not talk about that right now, but we're trust me, we're going to dive pretty deep into how RDDs work. Now, the Spark SQL module provides functions for manipulating large sets of distributed structured data using a, a subset of the SQL language. The data set API that I briefly introduced you in the previous lecture uh, comes from this module. Okay, so this module enables radical performance optimizations and it contains a query optimizer so that you can focus on your business logic rather than worrying about how your application will run on the cluster in a distributed environment. Okay, so it's no wonder why this is the most important and popular module in this ecosystem. Now, Spark SQL can also be used for reading and writing data to and from various structured formats such as JSON files and XML files, CSV files, as well as data sources such as relational databases and, and many other formats. Spark Streaming is a framework for uh, ingesting near real-time data from various sources. The supported streaming sources include HDFS, Kafka, Flume, Twitter. Now, you don't have to be familiar with all of these tools, but I'm just telling you that you can stream from various sources. This is also an important module that we'll be learning about later in the course. But in terms of the API, it's quite interchangeable. You can use the same code for running batch applications as well as real-time streaming applications. Now, Spark MLib is a library for popular machine learning algorithms. Machine learning is a big enough topic to deserve its own course, but we will be touching upon uh, some of the MLib libraries so that you get an idea of how you can use machine learning with Spark. The GraphX library is a new component within the Spark ecosystem, and it's powerful for working with graph data structures for implementing things like shortest path and page rank. We're going to look at some examples later on in the course. Now, out of the entire course, this has to be my favorite slide. And it's not because of this funky looking smiley face that I created. This slide explains a lot. And that is that a happy developer is a developer that uses a consistent API to interact with all of the different components of a particular system. And Spark really nails it in the head with this, okay? You can interact with Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, GraphX, as well as MLib by utilizing a consistent API. And you're seeing data frame slash data set. They're really the same thing. A data frame is a specific kind of data set. And we'll get into those details later, but that's what a happy developer looks like. You can use the same API to interact with these various components. All right, so I just wanted to keep this lecture short and sweet just to go over the Spark components. We're gonna dive much deeper into each of these components later, but I wanna get you up and running excited about coding with Spark so you can you know hit the ground running and set up your development environment and start coding using the Spark API. Okay, so we won't waste any more time with the boring stuff. We'll get into these things later, uh, such as talking about what RDDs are and understanding uh, Spark core at a deeper level. Don't worry, we're going to definitely dive into those details, but I don't want to bore you with that stuff here right now. I want you to start coding and working with Spark so you can see magic appear on the screen.